Well, we know that when it comes to trying to predict election outcome, people can obsessively focus on the polls. But post-Brexit, there seems to be a lack of faith or at least heightened uncertainty as to whether the polls really will hold the predictive power. Even if they do, they are forecasting a very, very tight race. To give us some insight into the polling challenges this election season, we're joined by Julia Clark, who's a pollster at Ipsos Re. Julia, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Give us a sense of your challenges uh, when uh, polling and what some of the factors are, because as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, Brexit and post-Brexit, we've sort of reevaluated what the polls truly tell us about a potential outcome. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that this uh, this American election is, is certainly not without its challenges for a pollster. Um, Brexit, of course, was a referendum. Referenda are a little more difficult for pollsters to predict because they don't follow the normal rules that we've learned and established uh, for a general election, right, for the election of a leader. Um, so I think we're on more st steady or stable ground than, um, than, for example, referendum polling, perhaps, for this general election here in the U.S., but some of the challenges we've faced uh, are really around uh, what we're calling almost the disruptive nature of this election. This election doesn't follow a lot of the rules of typical U.S. presidential elections. We have a Republican candidate in Donald Trump who's really not of the party. He's not a born and bred Republican. He sort of adopted the party uh, later on and certainly uh, at the outset of the primary process, but he was seen very much as an outsider. So in many ways, he doesn't have the automatic embrace of the grassroots of the Republican Party. Now, he's worked very hard to gain those uh, that support and those good graces, uh, but it, it's, it's an unusual situation wherein he can't necessarily 100% rely on the ground game that exists for mainstream Republican candidates supporting him throughout this the entirety of this cycle. It's also, though, a disruptive or unusual election because we have a population who is very, very, and I'm going to use a technical word here, very grumpy. <laughs> They're very upset um, uh, about the state of politics and the government in the United States. Um, they feel the system is broken. They feel the system does not work for them anymore. And this is actually on both the Democrat and Republican side. Um, and so we have a, a candidate from the Democrats who embodies the establishment and a candidate from the Republicans who's almost not quite a Republican, but who embodies change. And so, or at least change from the establishment. And so the job of a pollster in terms of trying to predict where the electorate, who is deeply unsatisfied writ large, is going to go on this uh, is a real challenge, absolutely. So how do you get around that. Uh, we have to do really, really excellent polling, but we don't just rely on the polls, of course. We have a lot of models that we use uh, and that we've used for over a year now, um, which look at some of the fundamentals. Where is the economy? What are Obama's approval ratings? Incumbency is actually a really critical factor when you're looking at election outcomes. Incumbents have a threefold advantage over non-incumbents when it comes to presidential uh, elections. And of course, we don't have an incumbent this time. Our fundamentals model, Ipsos is, actually suggests that it, it should be a Republican year, that it's the Democrats who have the real uphill battle. However, of course, as, as you know, all of the polling, essentially since Trump and Clinton were put against each other in any head-to-head -head polls, uh, has shown a very uh, strong and persistent lead for Clinton. Of course, we see polls with Trump ahead, but the vast majority uh, show a lead for Clinton. Um, so we have a situation wherein some of our fundamentals models are in direct contrast to the polling models that we are also following. Now, we do know that polls become much more accurate as we near Election Day. So at Ipsos, we are reliant increasingly and trusting of our poll based models. And we have uh, Clinton polling about three to four points ahead of Trump at this moment in time. Um, and, and our state level polling, uh, known as our States of the Nation poll, uh, shows that she's very, very close to 270. She'd only need a couple of uh, states to fall into her camp uh, tomorrow night to, to really clinch victory. How has polling evolved with the times? You know, I think about polling as picking up a, a phone, calling into a landline and trying to, to gauge intentions. But, you know, I don't have a landline anymore. You 
know, I'm on, on my cell phone, I'm more likely to voice my opinion on social media uh, versus that. How has Ipsos been able to capture that? Because if you're skewed to landlines, I mean, you're very much only going to a, a certain type of demographic. You're absolutely right, and you've actually really pinpointed the, the challenge not only facing pollsters this election, but our industry writ large. And certainly in the United States, the momentum in terms of the, the polling market, right, those of us who do political polling, is shifting. Um, it was always landlines, then it shifted to sort of what we call a dual frame, which is cell phones and landlines mm -hmm. together. And now it's actually moving beyond that even uh, with, with as many people doing online polling as, as non online, offline, right. phone polling. Now, Ipsos here in the U.S. does all of our political polling online. Uh, four years ago and six years ago when we started, it was pretty controversial. Now it's seen as uh, pretty mainstream, actually, um, and our accuracy records really reflect that it can be done if it's done very well, uh, if you're not reliant solely uh, on on uh, the 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 challenges of a panel alone. We use right. a lot of sample that comes to us from the internet at large, which makes our data not only big, but very robust. Julia, I'm going to have to end it there. Thank you so much for your insights. It was Julia Clark, a pollster at Ipsos, shedding some light on what's going on behind the scenes when it comes to trying to gauge who will win the election this year.